Hey, what's going on, Agents for Life? Welcome to podcast number 229. I'm super glad you're here, as always, and I hope to provide some good value for you today. Got some good stuff prepared, anxious and ready to jump in. I hope you're having an awesome week and hoping you're giving every day all you've got because that's really what it takes to become a successful independent life insurance agent. Really quick, mic drop thought for the for the podcast. The mic drop thought for the week is where value is present, price doesn't matter. I heard that uh, for the, I don't know, 10th time running uh, earlier this week, listening to a podcast. And it was just it just struck me. This is the time. This is the one where it really kind of made a difference. And you hear things over and over until they click. And then you're like, oh, okay. And that's kind of what happened to me. So I thought I'd share. We tend to skim through the value on our presentations, don't we? Because we're anxious to get to the price. We want to get right to the end where we can show the price. Why? Because if we show a price, the client can get excited, write an application, and hey, we get to submit another application. And that's kind of how we're trained inside or how we're we're wired rather. Well, what you're doing is skipping over the most important part, the value of what you provide. Unless there is value, it doesn't matter how cheap the price is or how expensive the price is. So get price out of your head and replace it with building value. And then price will become relevant. And then you can settle on something that will work for them. They have to see the value before they're willing to spend the money. So love that thought. I hope that helps somebody, but let's get on to the training. Okay. So this is the fun stuff. I mean, that was fun, but this is even fun too. So this is how to be a good mentee. And I realized that the reason this that podcast came up, this idea came up is I haven't really touched on this topic. A lot of times we come to this business and we don't know how to be a good student, right? We put a lot of, um, a lot of emphasis on the coach to, you know, to help me to coach me. And that's great. You know, and I'm not, I'm not, uh, backing down from any of that responsibility that I have to my agents, but it's two sides. I can't push a rope. You can't, it, it, it you know, you can't, uh, I don't know what other analogies are out there. I can't make you do something that you can't, that you won't, aren't willing to do yourself. So um, there are things you need to do as a mentee in order for me to be a successful mentor. Okay. So we have, we have to work together on this. Okay. So here we go. Number one, and I've got 10 of them that I came up with, 10 uh, things that you can do as a mentee to help me as a mentor, and I'm speaking on behalf of mentors everywhere, better do my job to help you, which is the ultimate goal, succeed in what you want to get out of this. So it all comes back to helping you. So help me help you, right? Here's 10 things. Number one, own your job here. Okay, it's one of our core values ownership. Okay. There's a lot of things to own when you come in. Number one, you got to own your past. Everything that's led up to where you are, that's made it so that you want to take a jump. You want to get out of your job. You want to start up a business. You need a side hustle, extra income, whatever that looks like for you. If you're not happy with that picture, you have to start making change from a place of clarity and, a, and, and from a place of absolute truth. Okay. And blaming other things, circumstances, other people, this happened, I went bankrupt, I had a bad job, I had a bad boss. Those are all external things. And you might feel justified in blaming external things, but ultimately it won't do you any good. You have to own where you are. You are where you are because of all the choices that you've made up until now. Today, you are a walking, talking, living compilation of all of your historical choices, good and bad. If you're successful, it's because you've made, made some good choices. If you're not successful, it's because you haven't made as many good choices, right? So that's the bottom line. We own who we are, how we are, how we show up, our past. So you have to come in here with a mentality of ownership. And I will say these other nine things are founded on ownership, on you taking ownership of your circumstances, who you are and where you're going and what you're doing and what your commitment is and everything. So own, own, own. You're a CEO now. You're an entrepreneur now. You're no longer an employee unless you're still working in day job and doing this on the side or whatever. But when you're here, 
when you're, even if you have a job, when you're an agent, you are a business owner. Owner, not borrower, not lender, owner, business owner. Okay, number two, be your worst boss and your best employee. What, am I, what do I mean by that? So we've all had bad bosses, right? Well, maybe not everybody, but you know what I'm talking about. If not, you know somebody that has a story. A lot of bad bosses in the world. Well, and some of them are bad in that they're sticklers on accountability. And that's what I mean by be your own worst boss. Be that boss that's a stickler on accountability, okay? So it's easy to set something on your calendar and not show up for it or to show up late for it or to show up half-heartedly for it. It's easy to say, I'm going to dial for three hours. And then you spend three hours dialing. You get through 10 names and that's it. Instead of pushing yourself to give as much as you can, be that whip cracker of a boss. And then, so the, the one that you didn't like because they were pushing you so hard. So be the tough boss, but be the best employee. I've also had coworkers or some of you've owned business. You know that you know the ones I'm talking about. Those employees, those superstars that go above and beyond, that show up with a good attitude every day. You got to be that for yourself. Okay, so that's for and for you know the mentor when we're coaching or we're or we're talking on the phone and when I'm asking about what you've been been up to, what you've been doing, what your activity's been. You got to you got to be your own worst boss and best employee. You got to be that type of person. Number three, honor your commitments. A lot of commitments that are made. We set up goals and we have the magic number, and there's things that we do. We dial, we run appointments, we build our team. Okay. You've got to honor any commitment that you make to yourself. I don't make those commitments for my my agents when they come on board. I don't I don't make your goals for you. I let you make your goals, of course. But whatever you choose as your goal, you gotta commit to it. Okay. Good or bad, for better or for worse, the commitment has to be there. God honors commitment. Okay. So we got to commit and it, it's not, we're not fair weather entrepreneurs. You know, we're not fair weather friends. We're, we don't just root for the baseball team when they're, when they're uh, in the world series and they're headed for first place. Right. But it, we, we have to take the good with the bad, the bumps and the bruises, and we stay true to our commitment regardless. Okay. All right. Number four, speak up speak up. Okay. I don't always know what's going on in your business. And I, I don't always know if you're going through challenges or trials or having a bad week. Um, and I, again, I'm speaking on behalf of mentors everywhere. So a mentor knows what's going on to some degree, but nobody knows the inner workings of your business like you do. Nobody knows how that dial session went like you do. If you gave it your all back to back for the time that you committed, or if you were clicking around on other things and took 27 bathroom breaks and whatever, any kind of reason to not dial. Okay. That's just one example, but only you know how you're showing up. So if you're having a hard time, we as mentors don't always know. So you've got to be willing to speak up. You've got to be willing to raise your hand and say, and have the humility to say, which is another one of our core values, have the humility to say, I need some help. This isn't working so well. Okay, A mentor is there to help you. And just because they're not calling every day doesn't mean they don't care. So we want to hear from you. Trust me when I say we, mentors everywhere, want to hear from you when things aren't going well. I don't want you to suffer in silence. I want you to raise your hand. So speak up. That's number four. Number five, be responsive. Okay. I check, I, I reach out and check with all of my agents periodically. Just how you doing? What's going on? Haven't heard from you in a while. Are things going well? Right. I do my best. Okay. I don't, uh, maybe I could do better. I don't know, but uh, this, there's, a, there's a lot to manage. There's a lot of people and I do my best to reach out get in touch with people, especially if I haven't heard from you in a while, but you'd be surprised at how many people don't even respond. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm the one that's committed to help you achieve your goals. I'm proactively reaching out, asking if you need any help. And I'm not even getting a response. What are you communicating when that happens? How important is this to you? Is it more important to me than to you? It shouldn't be. Your business should be more important to you than anybody. 
I always tell new agents, I will match your commitment 100%. But as soon as I feel like I'm doing more for you, or I'm more interested and more committed to helping you succeed at your business than you are to your own self and your own business, and your own family, when my commitment supersedes yours or is more than yours, that's the, that's the day I kind of know I'm, I'm probably talking to the wrong person, honestly. I can't want it more for you than you can want it for yourself. So you got to hustle. You got to be responsive. You got to speak up. Okay. When I reach out, definitely respond. Um, or if, or, you know, any mentor reaches out, you got to, you know, and, and that's, just, that's also a, a respect thing because we're doing this together. Number six, hustle. Do more than you think. Okay. A, a mentor gives you advice. And when I, one of the biggest things that I say on new agents is you got to get in front of people. We got to put people on your calendar. That's the number one job that you have. If you're hired as an employee and we make a list of all the things you got to do, that's at the top. It's number one. You got to put people on your calendar. Okay. So how do you do that? You got to hustle. So I can help you, but I can't do it for you. So, uh, so we're, we got to get you in motion. Okay. Activity. God can't, can't steer a parked car and a mentor can't guide you if you're not in motion because if you're not in motion all we're doing is regurgitating all the same training all right here's how to do a dial session start to finish here's everything you're going to show up with a lot of talents a lot of skills in certain areas and we don't know what those are until you get in motion so you've got to hustle okay so we have something to react to if not we don't have anything to react to we don't know what's going on we don't know where the problems are Get in motion, reveal the problems, let the mentor help you fix said problems, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So number six is hustle. Do more than you think you can do. Schedule more appointments than you think you can schedule. Dial more than you think that you need to schedule your appointments. Um, number seven, be coachable. Okay, this goes back to humility a little bit. Be the student. Show up with hat in hand, looking for answers, okay? looking for answers. And when we give you feedback, take it to heart. Okay? A mentor is someone whose advice you follow. Not just someone you admire, not just someone who you think is awesome or that you want to be like. It's someone whose advice you follow. So you don't just take their advice and go, oh, that's really cool. You actually implement what they say in your life. So be coachable, be that student, be that person that goes, finds out the answers and then puts them into practice, okay? That's number seven. Number eight, track your numbers. You knew it's gonna be here somewhere, right? Uh, I can't say it enough. Every agent that comes on board gets that spreadsheet with the numbers. Every CEO, every entrepreneur I know of, they know their numbers. They track them, they watch them. The, the numbers tell the story of your business. The numbers remove emotion out of the equation so you're not on that roller coaster. The numbers make it so we have clarity on what's going on, how to fix it. So when you call me and you need a strategy session because you got to fix something that's not working, first thing I'm going to do is pull up your spreadsheet. Let's take a look. Let's look at how you're doing. When it's empty, how do I react? How do I know what to say? I don't have much to go on, right? Okay, number nine is show up. Somebody said showing up is half the battle. Other people have heard it say it's 75%. I don't know. I don't know where they get their statistics from. I don't know how it was measured. I think it's just a number that they put out there to emphasize that showing up is a big, important part of what we do. Show up. I will tell you that we have daily roundtable sessions. A lot of agents don't show up for. Um, maybe you have a legitimate reason. Most people I don't think do. Because those aren't recorded and replayed. You have to show up for them. They're live coaching. These are top mentors in the company that are taking time out of their day to train anybody who comes on. Whatever questions, right? Open forum, many of these breakout rooms. It's insane how valuable this is. These are people making multiple six figures saying, I will help you and I will answer any question you want. Floor is yours. What you got? Yeah. How do you do this? What do you say with this? How do you do that? You can learn directly from somebody who is doing it, who has the fruit on the tree, but you have to show up. So don't show up half-heartedly. Show up 100%. 
When you go to a meeting and you're excited, a concert, let's say, you want right up there on the front row. Why? Because you can feel the sweat and you can feel the heat of the person. You can see the expressions on the face, the performer, right? Front row, nothing beats it. Right up there, right up front. Well, in Zoom, we really don't have front rows because we're not physical. But turn on your camera, right? Turn off distractions. Pull out a piece of paper and a pen. Be a front row kind of a shower upper. It will make a huge difference in your life because you're opening your mind to receive what you need in order to be successful. The system is all built on our meetings. We have trainings and meetings. I can't possibly train you on everything, nor would it make sense for me to try and do so. Instead, I'm going to plug you into the system. I'm going to plug you into the same place where I get my information. The system. Daily roundtable. We've got opportunity meetings. We've got live dial sessions. We've got uh, the coaching call the, on, on Mondays, our kickoff call. That's where the team is. This is where the leaders are. All the people that are successful in this, comp in this business, that's where they are. Why? Is it coincidence? That agents who don't make it, you can track prior to that, they stopped showing up. They stopped attending the calls. They withdrew. You take a stick out of the fire and it smolders and it goes cold. The fire still blazes, right? Don't withdraw. Show up and continue to show up. Make that a commitment. Even if you think you know everything, which hopefully you don't, hopefully you have humility, but even if you think, I'm not going to learn anything today, Show up. I promise you this works. It's how the system works. You've got to keep showing up. So that's number nine. Number 10, I just thought I'd end on a little fun one. Be you unapologetically. Don't be trying to be somebody else. Everybody else is taken after all. So be yourself. A lot of times we get in this business and we see other people and we're like, oh my gosh, superstar. I want to be that person. And then we try and alter our personality to be like that person. Well, I think it's human nature, but you have a unique set of skill sets. You have a unique personality. You have a unique way of doing things and unique energy. Now, I'm not saying if, if what you're doing repels people, you definitely want results. So what works, keep doing that. What doesn't work, do less of that. Pretty simple, right? However, don't try and be someone different. Don't be disingenuous. Be yourself. Be unapologetically yourself. Show up. Do all these things that we're talking about. You'll have success. You got to be a good mentor, a mentee. Okay, I'll do my best to be the best mentor I can. I'm not a perfect person either. But together, we're going to figure out how to get you where you want to be. But you got to do your part. And that's the best way I can sum up what it takes to be a successful mentee. So a good mentor can work with you on the other side of the, of the stick and together you can attack this and get your business to where you want to be. I hope that's helpful to some of you. Thank you for listening and uh, hope you put some of this stuff into practice. Have an awesome day.